Hello and welcome to this Photoshop training tutorial. Here we're going to be looking at montaging a couple of images using layer masks. Now, I tend to think that layer masks are very misunderstood and usually when I say to people at the beginning of a training course, do you understand masks? They all look at me blankly and go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it's at that point I realise that they don't. Now, here I've got two fairly straightforward images. They're already roughly the same size. And my plan is to take this image and stick it into this image and we're just going to extract the little house here and the reflection in the water and we're going to insert it into this image here and that's all we're going to take roughly from this image. First thing to do is to get my layer moving tool, activate this image and just drag it and drop it into that image there and then as always close images if you're not using them in Photoshop otherwise it gobbles up available RAM memory. Now I'm going to press F, and F is the keyboard command to fit it to full screen. If you press F again, then you get it even fuller screen. Uh, you get full screen on a black background, or one more press of F, and it goes to what I call window view. My preference is to go to this view in CS3 Photoshop, so I can leave all my palettes down the side nicely. A couple of things I need to do is that this image is too big. If I was to just put the house in there like that, the scale would be a bit ridiculous. So from my layers, I'm going to click onto my layers and I'm just going to take the opacity of this layer down. And this allows me to see through this image to the background image whilst I'm scaling it and moving it. You can see they have a, both have a sort of a common shoreline which I'm going to be using. I'm going to press Apple T or Control T on Windows and I usually hold down the Alt key and the Shift key as I scale because that allows me, like you can in Illustrator and other programs, to scale to a central point. Without the Alt key down it does that, but with the Alt key it always scales to the centre which is my preference. Now while still in the scaling mode I can then drag that over and I'm going to position it roughly across there. And I think that looks a fairly good sort of size. The reflection's looking quite nice in the water. So I'm going to hit return to accept that scaling. And then lastly, take the opacity of my layer back up, like so. A good idea is to switch on and off the layers so that you can constantly see what belongs in this photograph and what doesn't. And now my first task is just to get rid of everything I don't want in the picture, just leaving the house. I'm going to choose a brush. I could have pressed B on the keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut. And I'm going for a soft edged brush, and it's a relatively large edged brush. So the two keys to the right of the P key allow me to increase or decrease the size of the brush. On this layer, I want to add a layer mask. If I click this little icon, this adds a blank layer mask. At the moment, the image is still completely there, but by painting black onto this layer mask, is watch this, is that I can then just punch through this image, I'm just hiding the parts of the image that I don't want and then revealing the background layer. The way to think of a layer mask, I've often thought about the best analogy of layer masks and probably one of the best things is to get yourself a black piece of card and cut a shape out of it and hold it up against the wall and spray with a spray can over it. As you could say that the black card has acted as a mask and if you take the mask away and of course it will leave an imprint on the wall behind it of whatever you sprayed through so that's similar to how a mask works. I'm just going to hold down Apple and Spacebar or Control and Spacebar on Windows and zoom in a little bit. Uh, just zoom out one more. Now I'm still in my mask, I'm going to drag my layers out over here and then close the rest of that lot. I'm going to take my brush size down, so I'm just going to drop my brush size. And again I'm still painting with black, so I'm still adding to the mask, so I can then start to paint away the bits of the house that I don't want. Now at this stage I'm going to click onto my brushes palette and I'm going to go for a hard edged brush because I want to get a little bit more accurate around the edges of things now. So I can then start to paint away here and of course all I'm doing is revealing the trees in the background underneath. The great thing is it's quite a busy photograph, uh, they're both quite busy so it's going to be quite easy to reveal what you want to see in effect. I'm going to go back to a soft edged brush, it's probably a little bit too big. And then what I want to do is I want to take my opacity and my paint down. Now this is really where the key comes in in masking. You can see up here we have the opacity. So if I press 5 on the keypad that automatically changes it to 50%. This is a really nice feature. It allows for very quick editing. So I'm still painting with black which hides things remember. And I'm going to take my opacity down to 40%. And then I'm going to start to put strokes over here like this. And this is going to allow me to bring this tree out 
like so. As well as that, I can also hide the other parts of that image that I don't want. Now, every now and again, it's worthwhile to switch off that layer so you can see what we're showing and what we're missing. And I, I can see that I'm not getting the top of the tree in here. So I'm going to go down to a smaller brush and then by painting more low shades of black over there, so I can bring the tree back. I've obliterated a bit of the house, so I'm going to hold down Apple and Spacebar or Control and Spacebar. And again, slightly smaller brush. Pressing X on the keyboard is useful because X switches the background and foreground colours. So I'm going to paint white now. And by painting white, we'll now start to reveal the underneath image. So I can then just paint around the edges here just to bring the little bits of the house back where I obliterated it through the tree. Something like that. Obviously the longer you spend doing this the better. You might have to zoom in a bit more, change to brushes. These are relatively low resolution pictures so it's quite fast but great for the purpose of what we're doing here. So if I now hold down Apple Alt and Spacebar or Control Alt and Spacebar on Windows I can then zoom back out again. To change the way the reflection works, again, I've got a soft edge brush, I've got black, so I'm hiding the top image. I'm just going to take my brush size up very slightly, but then pressing 1, is this takes my opacity down to 10. So I'm now painting very light strokes, which will slowly fade things out. So I can slowly fade out bits here, and then I can just paint over this reflection. And this is very, very slowly fading it out with each stroke. And make sure you click and let go between each stroke. So there we go, it's beginning to look quite nice. Lastly what I want to do is that I'm just going to keep flicking this on and off so I can see what lives where in actual fact. And there seems to be some slight discolorization here from the top image and something over here if you keep your eyes on that as well. So I'm going to take my opacity back up, I'm going to take it up to about 70%. I've got black which hides the foreground, and just paint over that bit there and then just paint over that bit there as well. And I can just click it on and off again to see. There, I think that's looking quite nice. Finally, I can put my layers back into that little stack of all of the others, wait for it to go blue before it rejoins them. Double clicking the hand recenters the image as big as it can into the screen. And there we go, painting through a mask.